I grew up a victim of that which is not equitable. And I'm not going to preside over a process that will revisit that or even continue it. So you can wallow in the past. I'm going to be concerned about the future. And thinking about the future, let me just read for our benefit. This is the document from the attending physician. And I want to read it. For well, United States House of Representatives meetings in a limited enclosed space, such as a committee hearing room, for greater than 15 minutes, face coverings are required in all caps. That's not me. That's the attending physician. And we're not going to have another meeting in a confined space for less than, for more than 15 minutes if we are not going to abide by this. I will stay in the safety of my home like I would ask all you to do. I grew up believing that the first sign of a good education is good manners. I think it's good manners to look out for your fellow. And I see all the staff wearing masks. I don't know what this is. Mr. Chairman, we're you yield to, on that? I'll be glad to yield. I thank the chairman for yielding. And as Dr. Green pointed out, there are guidelines out there for how to properly social distance, and we're following those. And again, I understand doctors might look at things differently and want to give even extra precautions. But the precautions that have been out there are clearly being followed, and Dr. Green pointed that out, and none of us would want to put anybody else in harm's way. It's why the House has been having votes on the House floor safely, properly, with social distancing, with the necessary supplies to make sure we can wipe down spaces as we're all, you know, not here, but on in the House floor, we're working in a similar area, speaking at podiums, and as one person moves out, they wipe down the area, and another person uh, follows those guidelines just like we do here. I would yield back. M Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Raskin. I yield to Mr. Raskin. Okay, thank you. Yeah, go ahead, and then I'll, um, after you, sir, okay. please. Um, I, I really wish, Mr. Chairman, we could work this out pursuant to your suggestion following the exact instructions of the capital physician. Look, we don't have a cure right now. We don't have a treatment, and we definitely don't have a vaccine. We've got one thing which is the public health guidance from Dr. Fauci, the Centers for Disease Control, and the vast majority of the doctors in the land who do not think this is a hoax and do not think this is invented, and they don't think it's political. And there's one thing we can do. We can put our masks on, and we can keep our distance. Um, and I don't understand why my friends in the minority, who I know are sincerely motivated people, would lambast the majority for trying to keep the continuity of government going with committee meetings online with remote or through proxy voting and say everybody needs to be here everybody needs to be here and then show up and not wear masks and put terror and fear in your colleagues and perhaps your staff ms waters lost her sister to this disease we have lots of colleagues who've gotten covid 19. we've lost more than 125,000 of our countrymen and women. There is no other country in the world in which wearing a mask has become a political or ideological statement. It's a public health measure. You know, we've got a rule which says you can't, you, you have to wear a jacket on the floor of the house. And I know people tease our friend, Mr. Jordan, about never wearing a jacket. You know, I don't care about his not wearing a jacket. That's a fashion statement. But when he doesn't wear a mask and interacts with other people in a legislative assembly, it's dangerous. That is a public health menace. So could we all agree <clears throat> that we will abide by <clears throat> the chairman's suggestion and the capital physician's um, 
strict recommendation, and let's go forward and let's try to meet together as much as possible, as opposed to driving us away from the Capitol. Could, could, uh, could, uh, could I ask my friend, in Just reference to Mr. Jordan, I, I think you mm -hmm. used the term public menace. I, I, that's not a, I don't hope you weren't referring to him. Oh, it, he walked out mm -hmm. of here with a mask on. He walked, within, he walked within one foot of our friend Mr. Green. I saw it happen and they whisper to each other, and it happens all the time. You know, we might think we're in these six-foot bubbles, but we're not, and I see it happening on the floor on both sides of the aisle. You start to hang around with people. We're social beings, and people begin to interact. Did you see what happened in the Pennsylvania legislature, where one of the legislators came down with it, um, told his party, but didn't tell the other party? It created absolute panic and more division. Why are we the only country on Earth where this is now a matter of polemical partisan debate instead of just public health order. Why don't we just follow what the public health authorities, authorities are telling us to do? So Thank you. The doctor. chair recognizes Mr. Green. M Mr. Chairman, I, let me say before I, I, I cite this uh, study that just came out June the 27th, uh, that if you, if you, you know, put the gavel down and say, we, we want to wear masks or we're going to require, my, I'll wear my mask. But I, I do want to inform the, the committee, the Lancet published just on June 27th, a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is where they look at all these other studies and they compile the data and draw conclusions with hopefully more confidence because they're looking at multiple studies. They looked at 172 studies across 16 countries on six continents. They found that a one meter distance increased, it, it, it decreased your risk with moderate certainty. Now, when they do these meta-analyses, they, they say high certainty, the data is convincing enough to say that there's high certainty that the conclusion is accurate. There's moderate certainty and then there's low certainty. On the mask issue, it was low certainty that it makes a difference. The New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most respected journals in the nation, had an article several weeks ago that said, outside the healthcare setting, the masks don't work. Now, it was referenced earlier about fomites, and the, but yet documents are being passed around in here all the time. Are we sterilizing each document before we hand it off to one another? I, I, I haven't seen that. This mask that was sitting outside is there for anyone. They could go to the bathroom and, and come in and pull a mask out and touch other masks in the stack and then the next person comes along and collects the mask. We're, we're not doing surgical sterilization here. And, and I just want to, we have to be consistent. And I, if you say, Green, I want you to wear a mask, sir, I'll wear a mask. You're the chairman of my committee. But I, I want us to, to make decisions based on sound data and information. Thank you, sir. Will you yield for a question? Yes, sir, I will. Are you arguing that we should not meet in person? Uh, no, no, sir, not at all. I that think sounds this like the arguments you're making to me. No, I don't. I because don't. of all, because there's no certainty, the mask may not work, but we know how the disease is transmitted. So if the mask has just a low probability of working, maybe we ought not be meeting in person. If, if you're asking my clinical opinion, sir, yes, my opinion is is that patients who are in high risk categories oh, patients? Those age, pa people, people individuals sure anyone who's 65 years or older uh, uh, that's who has comorbidities should wear a mask if you don't i'm telling people in tennessee it's not required but, mr chairman that, could i ask about that the, as i understand it the mask is not to protect me it does it gives me a little protection but it's to protect other people in the event that i'm infected and a majority of the infections i understand are of people who are asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. So you don't know whether you've got it. We, we have members of Congress who didn't realize they had it, and they were fraternizing with everybody else, and any of us would do that if that were the rule. So why is this so complicated? There's one thing we can do to try to protect other people more together, which is put on a mask. It doesn't cost us anything. Why would we not do that? Why is it some kind of macho thing? Like, if I don't wear a mask, I'm tough. You know, I think, you know, if you want to be tough, go spend a day with the nurses and the doctors in the hospital, and all of them come out and say, everybody wear your mask. Listen to them. If you don't want to spend the day with them, at least listen to them. All of the first responders are saying, save us from this nightmare, wear your mask. So I can cite many other professionals who are saying just the opposite, and I... I, I so that's, okay. the, that's the challenge we're in right now. They're saying now. don't Even wear the, a mask? 
I'm well, not, when I'm around, I'm, a, I'm not wearing a mask. No. Mm -hmm. Will you send us the medical advice that people not wear a mask? Because I haven't seen that. I, I can share some medical literature with you. With Mr. It's like against the Centers for Disease Control. I, I know what they're putting out. Harvard yeah. University, okay. Johns Hopkins, all the studies I've seen. Okay, let me... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for... Okay. Uh, without uh, objection, all members will have five legislative days within which to submit additional written questions for the witnesses to the chair, which will be forwarded to the witnesses for their response. I ask our witnesses to please respond promptly, uh, as promptly as you are able to. With that, this hearing is adjourned.